chef and gourmet expert, Taku. In this episode, we talk with Taku, who is an outdoor chef extraordinaire and started a YouTube channel to showcase outdoor cooking. He now has a massive following waiting to see what food he's gonna put on his outdoor cooking grill, what outdoor cooking recipes he's gonna come up with and what outdoor cooking equipment he will use. Today, you will learn what you can eat while walking around San Francisco and whether the US or Japan comes out on top. Cannot wait to get into this episode, so let's begin. This episode is brought to you by the We Get Outdoors tribe where your next adventure is just one click away. You can join this, the fastest growing outdoor group on planet Earth and become part of a tribe of like-minded outdoor enthusiasts, sharing your adventures, their adventures, trips and insights, and helping to ensure you plan and have the most perfect adventures. Click on the link in the description below to join for free right now. So there are two things that I think most people in the world love and need. One is a full belly and the other yeah. one is fresh air. And Taku is somebody who I am incredibly envious of because he's managed to do both of those and do it in such a way that it's inspiring hundreds of thousands of people to, to get outdoors, and not only get outdoors, but thrive outdoors. So. For this, I've got my pen and paper ready because I'm going to learn so much. So, Taku, thank you so much yeah. for joining us, and I cannot wait to, to hear all your stories. Yeah, man, thanks for having me. So, um, where did your love from the outdoors come from? I think it was just uh, more of a natural thing. I don't think it really came from anything, but just since I was a kid, I was just like an outside kid. You know, um, it didn't matter. Ever since I was young, I was born in Japan. And uh, at the time, you know, you can, kids could play outdoors by themselves, you know, with friends. I was like, I was probably like five, six years old. I'll just go to the front yard. And I remember that I had like an obsession with jump roping at the time. <laughs> and I just like, from morning till night, all I did was come in and eat. After that, just go out and jump rope, and then my mom would just have to come get me for dinner. <laughs> and then, so I was just kind of always outdoors, outside, you know, uh, whether it was uh, biking, you know, just biking around with friends or just pushing a scooter around, skateboarding, all kinds of stuff. Um, but it was always just enjoyed being outside. And, you know, I mean, I play a lot of games, like, I play, played a bit of like video games indoors too, but I always preferred being outside. That was just where I was most comfortable, I guess. It's amazing though, from an early age, we all get that sense of where we're most comfortable, isn't it? So, yeah. so describe your, your childhood. So, so you were born and spent the first few life, your years of your life in Japan and moved across to the States. So talk, talk me through your yeah. childhood. Yeah, exactly. So I lived in Japan until I was uh, nine, nine years old. And so my mom decided to move me and my brothers along with her uh, to the U.S. And we have some family in the U.S. in California, um, mainly southern part of California in Ventura County, Simi Valley. And uh, we had a little, we had some family there. So they kind of helped us through, you know, the first several years of being in the States. And yeah, yeah. Uh, once we moved here, you know, it was my mom decided to move us here because in Japan, it's really strict. Like schooling is very strict and you have to get good grades. You have to do extracurricular activities and you've got to have schooling all the time, even on weekends, after school, mm -hmm. all this kind of stuff. So it's a lot of stress on kids, you know. So and my mom didn't want us to go through that and she wanted us to more enjoy our childhood be able to have fun and be kids so she decided to move me and my two brothers to the u.s where she felt like we were going to have a better childhood basically so do you and, thank your mom every day for that oh for sure <laughs> oh 
working out, you know, I, that's how I was raised. So just to have a good time. So now that's what I'm doing from my, for a, as a career too, you know, it kind of just transpired into adulthood. I've always just wanted to have a good time, whether, whatever it was, didn't matter if I was going to work or, you know, just hanging out. I just want to have a good time and that's it. You know, it's pretty simple. Um, don't stress too much and just enjoy. So you still a big kid at heart then? Oh yeah, for sure. That's all I do. You know, I just go play outside still. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's an interesting thing that you bring up there around uh, obviously the different cultures, but also how society is changing at the moment. I read uh, obviously an article that came out recently around the celebrity, outdoor celebrities like yourself really starting to advocate the need for kids to be outdoor educated more and actually spend probably more time in the outdoors rather than in the classroom. Right. Yeah, I think that's really important. You know, I think as we can, as a, as a young person, you know, if you get connected with nature a lot more early on in stage, I think you're going to care about it more up to, and then if we can expose kids to, you know, different varieties of what's possible to do in the outdoors and be able to have fun without having like a cell phone or, you know, iPad or something to watch, you know, I think it's really important for us to be able to enjoy uh, something without all of that, you know, distraction. And, yeah, definitely. We'll, yeah. we'll touch on, um, on your YouTube channel and Outdoor Chef Life in a second, but I just want to, I think it's quite personal. One of the episodes I really love watching of yours was when yeah. you went foraging in, in San Francisco mm -hmm. and just demonstrating to everybody what is actually yeah. our doorstep. And I think that's something for kids as well and adults to recognize a lot. Yeah, 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 that was pretty fun. Um, there are, uh, so I learned about foraging just not too long ago, maybe while I was in college. And yeah, and I just realized how much edible plants there are just uh, right next to you. That you just walk past every day so it's kind of interesting how much there is yeah and again for the listeners out there really we'll we'll obviously talk a bit more but that foraging one in san francisco just made me smile the whole way about I and mean, again like you said there taki you get you get i feel guilty a little bit watching that as well i felt guilty for, for two things so yeah thanks for making me feel guilty um <laughs> <laughs> one was my my personal lack of knowledge around uh, what is actually out there in the cities and right. be exactly what you just said there that we spend so much of our time with blinkers on that we we're missing all those little things out there yeah yeah it's uh it's easy to look past because you know most of it is just weeds and like it just grows and you either cut it down or you just leave it there <laughs> so you don't really think about it much other than that but uh when you actually look into it, mm -hmm. you realize that it's they're actually like edible, and a lot of it is much healthier and a lot more uh, well, one sustainable and um, a lot health, a uh, lot more nutritious mm -hmm. than many vegetables that you can buy in stores. Yeah, I can imagine. So, so we started to touch on on your foraging, but obviously. The name gives it away, the outdoor chef life. So where did, where did the love and the passion for cooking come from? Oh, the cooking, I cooked as a, as a kid with my mom a lot, uh, just growing up and I would help her cook in the kitchen. And after I actually moved to move out for college, that's when I really, you know, really became um, involved with cooking and really interested in becoming better and better at cooking. Uh, well, we're, we're college as in uh, uni, university. Yeah. I know where your, most of your audience are. <laughs> uh, so yeah. So, cause I was living on my own and I wanted to have good food, but I can't, I couldn't afford it. You know, it's pretty simple as that. Uh, so I was like, all right, let me learn to make my own food. And I really loved like the knife work aspect of it, just uh, cutting fast. I just thought it was cool. So like, <laughs> no matter what it was, I'm just like, I'm going to cut fast. And uh, that's fun. And 
Um, so I, yeah, I really gained my interest just throughout college, like pretty much cooking every single meal that I ate. And um, at the end of college, at the end of university, uh, I was decided to give it a try at a restaurant and see if I could really hang with the professional, you know, prof professional chefs in a professional kitchen um, just to basically test myself, right? And really like, do I have what it takes to be in a restaurant or am I just, you know, a good home cook, that's it. Uh, so I, I tried it, I went to a restaurant and uh, one restaurant gave me a shot and the, I met with three or four chefs and they interviewed me and they were like, okay, you know what, you can try it for a month. Uh, if we think you're good enough, we will think about hiring you. But if not, then you got to go. Mm -hmm. so I was like, all right, fair enough. You know, it's, it is what it is. If anything, I'll just, it'll just be, it'll be a, a learning experience. So I just took it that, and it was actually no pay either. Really? For that, yeah, for that first month. No pay. It's like, maybe you stay. But if you're not, you're gone, man. And yeah, the, after that month, they were completely, completely like, okay, we want to hire you right That's away. So cool. And it's like I, was like, I was like, all right. And then I had barely, I was exactly like, like the last month of university for me uh, during that time. I was like working for free, finishing my degree. And then I was like delivering Postmates to make a little income. Um, and then yeah, after I graduated, I started working at the restaurant. Um, it was a Japanese restaurant. And they have sushi and they had like steaks to uh, Japanese style steaks. So I just made, started making sushi there. And yeah, just learning a lot and becoming much better with my knives, uh, learning more about, you know, different types of knives and what to use in certain situations. And I actually ended up quitting that restaurant maybe a, about a year in because it was hard work, man. It was like a lot of, a lot of work, you know, long hours on your feet the whole time. And I was like, man, and I was making like almost no money. Like it was <laughs> pretty much just minimum, you know, minimum wage pretty much. And I was like, man, I can't live like this, man. This is so hard. <laughs> so I actually quit and I went to work for a physical therapy clinic, which is, you know, basically what I got my degree in. I had my degree in kinesiology. Uh, so I worked in a physical therapy clinic uh, for a year. And there was like a lot of overlap too, where I was doing the restaurant uh, and physical therapy, uh, working both at the same time. So I would go like 7 a.m. to work physical therapy, get off at two and then go straight to the restaurant and work until 11 um, in hmm. the restaurant. I was like uh, at a point that I, was, I would work like 28, 28 days in a row and with a lot of them being double shifts. Um, so I was just, you know, I was just grinding. I was just trying to make it through. Uh, and then I worked at the physical therapy clinic for a year. And I told my, the therapist I worked for, um, I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to actually quit and go back to the restaurant. <laughs> and the therapist, you know, I was really, they were awesome and they're really good therapists. And they were like, you know, like you're going to, you would make a really good physical therapist, but if that's what you want to do, you know, that's what you want to do. And so they were like really understanding. So then I went back to the restaurant. Um, Tail between your legs, was it? And yeah. Wait, hold on a second. You're cutting off a little bit. My connection is a little bad here. All right, go ahead. Say it again. I said, did you go back to the restaurant with the tail between your legs? <laughs> no, no, not really. They were, um, they were actually like asking me to come back like really? over and over. Uh -huh. I quit. Yeah. So they wanted me to come back from the, from since I quit. <laughs> and 
um, at the time, right before I went back, I had an offer, another restaurant offer from Google. I, um, Google was opening a, Google was opening a uh, sushi cafe in one of their offices in Silicon Valley. And they offered me a job there. But I was thinking, I thought about it and I was like, do I want to go back to the restaurant? Do I want to work, you know, pretty easy job, easy going, um, just working weekdays, weekends off, holidays off, paid vacation for Google, you know, a lot of benefits. But I, I decided to go back to the restaurant because I was like, I guess it's kind of like selling out at this point, just making cafeteria sushi, you know? So I was like, all right, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm going to go back to the restaurant. How old are you this time? Uh, about 24. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, I just, I was like, no, I'm going to do the restaurant thing because I want to become better. I want to become an actual chef. You know, I want to be, make sure I can do all these things that I'm supposed to be be able to do you know as a chef and yeah so I went back to the restaurant worked there for another year and uh they were they were uh tell me you got a nice pay rise when you went back to the restaurant yeah I did yeah I got a pay raise uh and then they kept wanting to promote me more and more and they I actually became like lead sushi chef at the at the restaurant and i was starting to teach all the newer guys coming in and you know just taking control of everything um, that had to do with the sushi side of the restaurant and but i was like you know what um it was either i get a get a raise like become like a manager actual manager in the restaurant or i'm gonna quit go somewhere else so i decided to quit because I just felt like for, for me personally, I wasn't ready to be teaching um, everybody else that was coming in because I had so much more to learn. So I had to, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna quit, we'll go work at a different place. And that's what I did. I quit that restaurant and then I got a, um, I got, had a friend or another chef that I used to work at that same restaurant, but he opened a omakase style restaurant. Uh, which is a little more like, uh, I guess, a little more high end. And so he was like, yeah, come, come help, come work at the restaurant I'm at, I'm at now. Um, it's called Hinata. So I basically had a job offer right away. And I was like, all right, you know what? I'm going to try it. I'll, I'll go work with, I'll go work there with you. And I actually learned a lot there too. A lot more different things, a lot of more variety and more more uh, attention to detail about certain things, cutting fish and more technique on how to um, prepare the fish. The preparation is really, really important. Uh, some stuff that I never really thought about, you know? So, yeah. Um, and that's pretty much the time also I started my YouTube channel. And then I told my boss right away, I was like, all right. I was like, all right, boss, 200,000 subscribers. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> it was like right when I started, right? I had like 20 subscribers. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> that was the motivation, that hand in the face. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like you've got, throughout your, sort of your career up to where you have described your story, that you had sort of two things. One was quite an intuitive idea of what you needed and wanted to do and also mm -hmm. a, quite a clear, a clear about the pathway that you sort of needed to go in order to keep learning and progressing yeah definitely progressing and learning 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 is really like one of my favorite things i guess i always love to learn new things and i don't like uh being stuck at that same level of knowledge I always want to keep improving and especially on things that I, 
I'm really passionate about. I think I've had a lot of passions in my life, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> whether it was sports or or whatever. Um, so everything everything that I did, I always wanted to keep improving and getting better on. So yeah, that's really important to me. So, so how did you do? So how did you bring those two passions together? The the outdoors and the cooking, and, and where did the the YouTube channel idea come from? How did that all come to to fruition? Yeah, so uh, so I've been fishing since I was a kid. You know, my dad took me fishing in Japan since I was like four or five years old, and I had my first rod, my first fishing rod. I think I was like six. I got it for Christmas. I was like super stoked. So. <laughs> And I think my dad still has that rod. Uh, so ever since I was a kid, you know, I've been fishing. So, but not like, like really, I wasn't really good. You know, it was just kind of easy fishing. Um, but then I started realizing like, man, I need to start going, start going fishing again. Because all throughout college, I think I stopped fishing. I didn't fish at all in college. And I did a little bit in like beginning of high school. Um, but that was about it. So I had hadn't fished for a while. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna get back into it. And, and yeah, once I started getting back, it's like, it's like, oh, I remember why I love doing this now. <laughs> and uh, now at the point now that I have a lot more skills in cooking, and it was just kind of like had this mentality of like like a mind of a chef, you know? It's like, what can I make? with this ingredient and especially because of how fresh it is you know, there's so much opportunity um, for different kind of dishes and fresher the ingredient you know the better right so that's like a sushi chef's dream hmm. you know that's how i kind of saw it and it's like so much so much available that that is so fresh and that i can harvest myself I was like, all right, now let me start making these dishes that I might make in a restaurant. And uh, yeah, that's how I, I, I did. I was doing that already, like before I started my YouTube channel and seeing people like in the same area that has a, that have a YouTube channels. Like I seen them like come up and become like really popular on YouTube. Like for example, Fisherman's Life. Uh, he's another YouTuber in San Francisco and He's got almost a million subscribers now, and uh, but not really like he cooks a little bit, but not really like a like a restaurant style, you know. Um, so I was like, hmm. I was like, maybe I should start a YouTube channel. Maybe people would like what I do, you know, like make, making these, catching these uh, awesome fish and harvesting, foraging these amazing fresh ingredients like clams and mussels and sea urchin uh, straight from right here the shoreline I'm just so close to San Francisco like a big a major city and yeah I, once I started I think it was just sort of a, a ripple effect just kind of started growing really fast and yeah so um, see probably there's sometimes the most simple labels are the best labels and I'm assuming outdoor chef life is a brilliant label because it tells you exactly what it does but was yeah. it as simple as you being outdoors one day and that's where the name came from or was there oh, yeah. another party who helped you on that one um so the, the coming up with the name was uh I just brainstormed my girlfriend and I actually brainstormed a bunch of different possibilities you know do you remember any of those possibilities yeah, like outdoor kitchen, out, outdoor chef was like the top pick, but I think somebody already had that, so I couldn't choose that one. I was like, oh, so we, um, so my girlfriend thought of outdoor chef life. That's very, very it's, cool. like, it's like the chef life, you know, but in the outdoors. So it's kind of like, it's, it's like that. Cause chef, like hashtag chef life, that's like, that's like a thing, right? Yeah. For um, a lot of, uh, restaurant workers and stuff so and then just slap outdoors in front of it because that's where I'm doing most of it and I'm catching these you know ingredients and yeah so so what is what is how would you describe outdoor chef life what is it 
So I, I always say let's um, harvesting fresh ingredients, uh, harvesting the ingredients myself. So actually, at least the main portion, <clears throat> uh, the star of the dish, uh, whereas where it's a uh, fish or shellfish and just uh, gathering it myself and making it into a dish that is uh, pre pretty much worthy of a restaurant. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you got, um, I love the episode when you went lobster diving. Yeah. That one got my taste buds. I think I've never drooled so much in front of a computer <laughs> Yeah, no, you sh it's, it's hard for me when I'm editing it. I get so hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to watch it for, I'm editing for hours, so at least the video is only like 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. but look, that one I love because the great thing about that video for me was the whole experience of, of going diving, catching it with your yeah. hands for the first time. That must mm -hmm. be really satisfying, that whole process, just from a pure enjoyment. Yeah, yeah I, I really didn't know if I was going to be able to actually catch them. Um, but it was actually, it was easier than I thought. You shouldn't say uh, that. Lie. Say yeah. it's so difficult. I'm a natural. Yeah, yeah. And it was uh, it was night diving too. So I, I I never done any night diving, so I was, was a little, you know, scared. Of like, am I gonna get spooked out of like the open open ocean at night? Uh, but it wasn't too bad. Until yeah, you saw so the shark. Like, yeah, and then the shark just swam right in front of my face. <laughs> And it was like, literally like, I didn't even see it because I was like looking on the floor and it just came up like right next to me. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> but then it was just a small shark, you know, a harmless shark. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we've got great whites here. We've got Zambezi, bull sharks. So we've got a few different, when we go in the water, we've got a few different things here to worry about. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, so the outdoor, outdoor chef life, what, what impact are you hoping it's having on people? Why do you think what you do is, is important? Well, I think, um, I think I'm getting a, a lot of attention from like the foodie side of people, you know, people that really enjoy having good food, but they're not really connected with where the food comes from. Mm. Um, and I think that's a really important aspect of, of any, any cuisine, anything you eat, right? Because, um, what you, what you eat can affect the environment, right? So I always touch on, I always try to touch on sustainability in my videos and how it's important to, you know, for the outdoor portion, it's important to keep everything at a sustainable measure, you know, making sure we're only taking uh, what we're going to eat and, and nothing's really going to waste. Because um, I think the more people get in touch with nature and people fall in, more, fall in love more with what we have available to us, I think that's it's going to make people care about it more as well. So if we care, if we, if I can get more people to care about the environment and the effects that we're having, uh, the impacts that we're having, then maybe you know we can better the planet um, in in the big picture of things. Yeah, that comes out a lot in your in your videos. Where I remember when you were cutting seaweed and you're adamant that you cut it in the right place in order that it right. grows back properly. Right. You're right. They are like, it's, um, I guess once you're just starting off, it's kind of hard to know that, you know, is this a sustainable way? Like you don't, you don't really know, right? You don't really have an idea, but so that's why I try to always implement that. This is, that there's a sustainable way, you know, there's then doing it another way, like pulling out the whole if you pull out the whole root of the seaweed, then obviously it's like pulling out a whole plant, right? So it's gonna, you're taking away from the ocean. Whereas if you just cut just the tips off, then you're just uh, giving it a trim, right? Mm -hmm. It's gonna grow back. Yeah. And as a, so a so you're just thinking as, as you share this, this knowledge with, with the listeners that 
I like those little examples there where you say it's giving it a trim because it's something that's going to stick in people's mind when they're out there harvesting. That yeah. That what other yeah. things would you so for, for real basics, let's say for people who are going out for the first time, what are the top two or three things that you would be advised them to think about that they would remember from day one? Well, always the first rule, you got to be, it's safety, right? You got to be safe so you never turn your back on the ocean because that's where I'm mostly doing um, the harvesting. So that's important, but um, just being, just, uh, I guess knowing what you're going to harvest and how you are harvesting it is uh, is important. So I guess for the first few times, you can just, you don't even have to harvest anything. Just go out and learn what's in your area, learn the environment a little bit, get familiar with it uh, before you actually start uh, gathering food from that area because you never know um there could be shortages of things uh in certain areas that um, you might not know about but if you go out there a few times before you actually gather it uh, then you can you know see for yourself it's like is there are plenty plenty of muscles here that i can gather because if not then just go somewhere else um, so I think maybe thinking something like along those lines uh, would, would be helpful. So when you go out, do you, are you going out with a specific recipe, recipe or plan in your head or are you going out there and going, I'm going to see what I can catch and then I'll, I'll do what I can do with what I've got? Uh, it's both, but uh, a lot of the times I am targeting a certain, certain species. Yeah, so I'll, we'll have in mind like, okay, I'm probably going to find this, this, and this. Um, so then I can start thinking of uh, the, the, the dish I'm going to make beforehand. So if I already know I'm going to gather seaweed and clams, then like a re recent episode I did, I, I made some kelp pasta, which was just instead of pasta, I replaced it with kelp. Hmm. And it was like a like fettuccine size kelp, little strips of it, along with clams. It was like a clam fettuccine dish. Um, so yeah, I, ha I already had that in mind, you know, that, that I was going to make that because that's what I knew that I was going to gather for the day. Um, but there are times I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to go out there. I don't know what I'm going to get. I don't know what I'm going to find. So let's just go and see what we find and then we'll uh, we'll make it work. Okay, so it's probably, you've whetted my appetite already with fettuccine kelp and clams. <laughs> yeah. um, so for all those people who are about to get hungry, I apologize now, but if you, what well, if you could cook your one, your one dish, which, what's your signature, signature dish, the one that you're, you wanna, you, what you'd love to cook every single time you get a chance to? Oh man, I don't know. Oh, I, well, I'm a sushi chef. You're already shaking oh. with excitement about the thought of this. Yeah. Thing. <laughs> I'm a sushi chef, so I really, I really love sushi. I really enjoy having these amazing fresh ingredients. Like one of my top favorites, I'll go with, uh, oh man, clams maybe. Clams is one of my favorite. Uni is also one of them and um, certain types of fish that uh, I can't get around here, but like I've, I've done in other places, like in Hawaii, like I caught this fish, it's called a moo, that's a uh, emperor fish, and I made sushi out of that, and that was amazing. Um, so I guess to answer your question uh, more briefly, I guess I'll make sushi. <laughs> <laughs> Um, where, if you could pick one location that you've been to so far, or maybe it's on your your list of places you want to do an outdoor chef episode from, where would that be? Oh, um, I think the dream location is uh, New Zealand. Really? So, New Zealand, yeah. I've been really wanting to go there for a while, having done it. And actually, my girlfriend and I both want to 
spend like a, a solid year in New Zealand and just getting to know the land there because I, you know, I already know it's amazing, mm -hmm. right? From what I've seen, it just looks amazing, sounds amazing. And I not have these uh, people from New Zealand that watch my videos and know they're always commenting like, oh, you got to come out to New Zealand. You're going to love it. And I'm like, for sure, like a hundred percent, I would love it. So it's kind of like, that's the, that's the dream destination uh, for me. You picked a good place to go. That's a beautiful place to go. Yeah. Have you been there? Yeah. I fortunately spent only three months traveling around New Zealand, but it was, I did it in a, with an intent and just backpacked and hiked and yeah. just slept by glaciers. Oh, it's a beautiful, beautiful place. Yeah. More, more beautiful than you thought it was going to be? Um, yeah, I think it's because, especially growing, I think growing up in the UK where you've got 60, 70 million people, and I think what the six or seven million people in the whole of New Zealand, it's, it's the landscape beauty, but it's the peace that I was really struck by. Oh, yeah. I think it's, yeah, it's the little things that you, and that's why the outdoors for me is such a special place where you get to hear the wind. You know, it's a stupid thing to say, but it's, you just don't hear the wind very often. Right. Yeah, I get what you're saying. It's just a beautiful sound and stuff. So yeah, no, I think New Zealand is, uh, and the diversity from the tip of the North Island to, I, I went from top to bottom. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, it's, it's the diversity of the whole place is spectacular. That's awesome. Yeah, I can't wait. So when you, when you do your trip to New Zealand, um, what's the, I'm, I'm pretty much guessing as a sushi, sushi chef, I know the answer to this question, but I'm going to ask you anyway, what's that, the one item that you would never leave home without? Oh, I always bring my knives. Yeah, I thought that might be the answer. Yeah, that's a pretty easy answer. I always bring my knives. Yeah. Um, I have my knife bag, you know, full of knives, so. I'm ready to go all the time. Ready to go. Drop of a hat. It's like a doctor's bag for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I got everything I need in there. <laughs> yeah. In the rest, I'll just go catch it myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can survive. Yeah. Right, we're going we're gonna to take a little change of tack now before we, we carry on about the outdoor chef life. And I'm going to give you our famous We Get Outdoors quick fire round. Okay. So it's um, either or. There's no sitting on the fence. There's no, can I have a little bit of this or a little bit of that? Okay. You've got to be decisive with your answers. <laughs> All right. That's Are hard. you ready for this? Yeah, I'm kind of nervous. I don't know if I'm <laughs> <laughs> sea or land? Sea. Fish or meat? Fish. Water or soda? Water. Japan or the United States? Ooh, you, 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 you got me, huh? You got me. I'll give um, you one little card. Is, little card. That's an unfair question. You can, you can put on that one. Because I'm going to go with the United States. Okay. Sun or snow? Sun. Rice or noodles? Rice. Axe or shovel? Shovel. Wood or gas? Wood. Hiking or a road trip? Road trip. Beer, whiskey or wine? Beer. River or lake? River. Salad or veg? Salad or veg? Yeah. Uh, uh, veg. Shower or bath? Say that again. Shower or bath? Shower. Social media or face to face? Face to face. A solo trip or a group trip? Solo. Log cabin or sleeping in a tent? Tent. Cooking in a kitchen or on the beach? On the beach. 
Jamie Oliver or Gordon Ramsay? Gordon Ramsay. There, you survived. <laughs> <laughs> Only one stumped you, which was a tough one. That was the cruel one I asked you. Yeah, that was. Because I'm both. I'm literally Japan and the United States. I uh, you know, and I love, yeah, the. I guess the only reason I chose the United States is there's a little more. Uh, there's more variety. Even though, like, not in not just uh, the amount of outdoor opportunities, but uh, just in general, I think it's. Um, we have a lot more in the U.S. Yeah, yes, a lot. Of, just more variety. Yeah, it's a tough, tough question. More, more I've got the same. Too. Yeah, Pardon? but Japan is amazing too. I mean, it's my home country. I love it. Love going back there. Um, but I always say, like, people will ask me, like, "Oh, would you move back to Japan?" And uh, I think I don't think so. I don't think I would go out, go out and live in Japan again. Just maybe for a month or so at a time that's about it yeah yeah, exactly. yeah. i've got the same feeling i've uh, i left the uk when i was 18 mm -hmm. and um people say when i moved back to the uk it's not i probably i like i love visiting absolutely love going home but it's not somewhere i can see myself living again for a bit yeah um i'm um, right. in, interested on um outdoor chef life so where it's obviously grown rapidly and you've been mm -hmm. phenomenal in what you've done and got a good loyal following across all social media channels with a big focus on YouTube. So where, where are you hoping to take the outdoor chef life? Um, in, in terms of, in terms of um, how like the growth, social yeah, media. Where, what, what do you want to do with it? What do you see as your legacy, as your outdoor chef life legacy? I think I'll just keep doing keep doing what I'm doing now and just have a just to really be solid on YouTube at least. And then I don't really I don't really know what the future holds, but uh I'm always open to different things <clears throat> and <clears throat> excuse me. I'm always open to different opportunities. So I'm really, I really don't know what's going to come my way, but um, I'm open to it. You know, that's, uh, that's how I see it. It's kind of like, I don't have a really set destination, but uh, I'll see where it takes me. Which in, in today's current climate with us dealing with this pandemic is probably quite, quite a good way to do that because it has made a lot of us stop and pause and, and reflect on things at the moment yeah yeah it's pretty crazy um but you know what i think uh one of the safe places to go is just outdoors alone <laughs> yeah. right no, nobody else is there can't get sick from trees no <laughs> this is them fighting back a little bit isn't it so yeah uh, yeah i think it's a it's something that we're we're on the same page that the the space and the freedom of being outdoors when we've got yeah. and it's that sort of oxymoron at the moment isn't it where you're being told to self-isolate and stay inside but actually probably the best thing you can do is go on a hike for five days and things to get out there. yeah exactly just be be away from society right be instead of hanging out in the city um i think that's in my opinion would be better but I guess if everybody did the same, then there's going to be people out there too. But I don't know. But <laughs> so what, yeah. what other outdoor activities do you love doing? What other outdoor activities? Yeah, hiking. Um, yeah, hiking is great. Uh, we love to go camping. Um, we do, yeah, we do a lot of good amount of like tent camping. And probably, probably um, every month, yeah, we'll do something. Um, love fishing, love to go, going to the coast. Uh, I used to big on, I used to be big on sports. So I used to play a lot of sports outside, but 
not not so much these days. Uh, so I've got and then, I've yep. got a question for you that all our listeners ask us to ask the people who are interviewing, and I love the answer to this question because I think if you go for big hikes, we took not big, but talking seven, ten, fourteen day hikes. Yeah, yeah. And the first seven to ten days, you're good with food. You can carry your food, you can cook food. But once you get into day 10, you're starting to get a bit bored of the same kind of food. Okay. What, what are your tips to, to eating amazing food on day 14 of a hike? Oh, I think the, the best way is to look for the food out there, right? It's kind of, um, for me, even on day one, it's like the best part about being outside is I get to experience these the amazing um ingredients that these uh natural plant whether it's plants or uh, shellfish i can being able to catch it and knowing how to identify things is i think one of the most important things then you don't have to stick to a you know a dry pre-packaged food you can um gather food on the fly so you're, the only thing that you pack for the food on your hike to your nose and your fishing rod yeah you know just nose fishing whatever i need to need for fish. maybe a little little field guidebook <laughs> <laughs> um so i've got the the next bit for you which is you've had the the patient of the saint answering all these questions. But I'm, now we do, every episode we do our power minute, which is to give our guest a minute to share the one piece of advice, the thing that they really would like the listeners to, to remember from, from and learn from your experience. So I'm gonna hand the microphone over to you and mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you a minute or however long you want just to chat to share one piece of advice that you think is something that maybe a mentor passed down to you or that you live your, your outdoor chef life with. So the microphone is all yours. Okay. Well, I think I've already touched on it a bit previously, but the sustainability is really important. But if you can, if you can learn to identify what's around you, what's in your environment, and I think uh, if we can all, if we can all make ourselves a little bit more knowledgeable about the things around the natural resources around us, then then you also benefit from from it because you can, you know you can eat you know what you can eat in situations like today where there's no food at the grocery market yeah. you can go out. You know, I can go out to the coast and get, just gather um, what's necessary just right here, just in my own, in my own area. So wherever you are, there's always something you can eat. So if we, yeah, make ourselves a little bit more knowledgeable, do a little more research, then we can help to, or we can sustain ourselves even without these, uh, in, even in these times when we have no stores, no, no food at the stores and no restaurants open. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think it's a good time. I think it's a good time to be a forager right now. hundred <laughs> percent. Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. So sustainability, I think it's a really key one. And like you said, with, with the coronavirus pandemic, it's a, it's a really powerful message um, that, that's out there at the moment. So uh, cool. So everyone, I think again, it's it's being sustainable. It's it's. I think your advice earlier was so pertinent, which is go out there, explore, learn, take your time, don't rush the process. Um, yeah, yeah. Really cool advice. For sure. Um, so with the your experience in the outdoor and everything you do in the outdoor, what do you think is the next big thing in the outdoors? The next big thing in the outdoors. Yeah, what's, what are the trends that you think are coming? Well, I was saying, I said in my recent video, uh, I did two videos on it, and the 
the most, uh, what I think is going to become trending is kelp uh, because there are some parts of the world that have been eating kelp for centuries, but majority of places, especially, you know, in the United States where most people never have kelp in their diet um, or, or much seafood for that matter, um, I think there are companies that are making kelp more approachable and more like it's just making it available i guess so i think i was saying in my video that uh, you're gonna start seeing more of this sort of like a trend in the restaurants um if we have any more restaurants <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I think I think that's what we're going to start seeing because kelp is so beneficial to us and the environment. Growing kelp, you know, takes it absorbs carbon dioxide, and it also brings us oxygen, just like a um, just like a like a plant would, and it's beneficial for the the environment, as in the fish that are living there, and all the species that are in the ocean, it's beneficial for them. And when, when we can harvest it and we eat it ourselves, it's, there's so much nutrients that go, the kelp have that uh, most of other plants don't have. So, and it do, and I think people will start realizing that and, um, and realizing how beneficial they are. So that's, that's the, that I'm calling that, that's gonna be the trend. There you go, you heard it, you heard it here and watch the videos to get more insights into kelp. But, so talking about your YouTube channel and your videos, what's the, the best way for the listeners to, to learn about an outdoor chef life and, and follow you? Yeah, so you can find me on YouTube, Outdoor Chef Life, or on Instagram at Outdoor Chef Life. And nice, nice and I have a website as well, website outdoorcheflife.com. That's it. And the cool thing I love about your website as well is people can, uh, you share the merchant, the, the products you use, the cooking, all that kind of stuff and the camera. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I try to, try to, you know, because people want to know, you know, what knife are you using? What are you using for this? And that. So I try to incorporate that in each video too, just at least in the description box. And I'll write it down if I don't say it on the videos and like provide a link. And so people can, you know, if they want it, they can get it themselves too. And when am I going to be able to buy the Outdoor Chef Life recipe book? Oh, the recipe book? Man, I don't know. People do ask for like a cookbook, right? But first, <laughs> I don't, I hate recipes. <laughs> I want an Outdoor Chef Life foraging, what to look for, what to forage. But... Yeah, that's what I want to do. Like I want to learn about every coastline and everywhere I can in the world and just uh, make a cookbook for each section, right? Do yeah, that would be. California, do a New Zealand, a UK, all this. You can harvest this here and then make this. Yeah, that would be pretty awesome. That's going to take some time to, you know, become knowledgeable of all these places, but. Uh, I'm pretty sure you could do one pretty soon in San Francisco area. I probably could. I'll just have to make the effort and start measuring my my uh my cooking i never <laughs> measure anything that's why it's like <laughs> it's hard for people to replicate because that's how that's how it is like most most places and even in restaurants or just general cooking it's more intuitive rather than following a recipe but don't you think that's great about uh, that's the thing i love about it that's, yeah no i think that for me is the biggest thing that differentiates the outdoors from anything else like you can't get a, a, a stove to 180 degrees. You just can't do it in the outdoors. Yeah, you just yeah. got to make do with what you're good. You, every time you start a fire, the mm -hmm. ingredients you're using are different every single time. That for me is the beauty yeah. about it. Yeah, exactly. It is. There is a beauty about it, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So make sure that recipe book stays natural. <laughs> <laughs> what about, what about uh, do you ever take uh, requests for episodes? Say that again, sorry, you cut out a little bit. Do you ever take or have you ever had requests from people about episodes to do from the Outdoor Chef Life? 
Oh yeah, yeah, I have uh, all the time. You know, people. I think there's. So I just filmed a freshwater episode because there are a lot of people that are that watch my videos, but they don't have the coastline anywhere near them. So they were like, "Hey, can you do you know some freshwater stuff like some trout or some?" So I just went fishing for crappie, um, which is a very popular freshwater fish. So it's like a, I do get these requests, and um, I'm happy to do them. You know, if as long as uh, yeah, I can, I have access to it, I guess. So you haven't had a request for the naked outdoor chef life yet? <laughs> like a naked and afraid version. Yeah, <laughs> we actually no, not yet, no. <laughs> We interviewed EJ Snyder. That was uh, he was oh. some of his cooking stories were quite fun. <laughs> nice. Yeah. See, I'd love. Uh, my, I've got a ten-year-old son, mm -hmm. and I I'm always on the lookout for for things that I could show because obviously all kids nowadays they don't believe their dad. They normally believe Google. Google's much more knowledgeable than their dad is. Mm. But um, I've always, I'm trying to talk to him about sustainability about harvesting yeah. and foraging and cooking but obviously trying to do it with a 10 year old's mindset is not always easy but i know he would love something about that's aimed, yeah. that helps him forage when he goes out to the beach and stuff yeah sounds good <laughs> cool so unfortunately we have we've run out of time and i'm very appreciative of you giving us your time and sharing yeah. your, your wisdom experience um and probably for me, some of the most, <laughs> some really powerful lessons um, of outdoor living and sustainable. So I'd like to just thank you very much for, for what you're doing for society. I think too often people don't really take ownership or, or actually take their passions and make a difference in the world. But you are making a difference by helping people just be healthier, be happier, be freer, be more appreciative of what's out there. So I'd like to really thank you for everything yeah. you're doing. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate everybody watching and really, you know, it's, it's amazing that I've, I've come even this far already. So I really appreciate everybody that, you know, that, that watch my content and that support it and, and uh, that can try some of the things I do. It's really cool to see. Perfect. Well, thanks for your time, Taku. All right. Thank you.